Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to a statistics tree diagram exercise at the IB Math AISL level. Here we have a bag that contains six white and four orange table tennis balls. See, we have Jack picking first, which is this guy here. And then we have John picking second, which is either here or here. See? For completing the tree diagram, there is one really good rule of thumb that I will share with you right away. That is the following. Each one of these splits, when I say split, I refer that this is one split, this is another split, and this is yet another split. Every single one of these splits has its probability added up to one. In terms of probability, if it adds up to one, this is the same that it adds up to 100%. See? This is very, very valuable. All right, you're gonna see in a second now why. If we look at the first split, we're gonna notice that the probability that Jack picks orange is two or five. This is something that the exercise gives us. The probability that, it, that uh, Jack picks white is going to be X, see? Now, using this mega rule of thumb, you're gonna see that two over five plus X equals one. And suddenly, this looks pretty darn easy to solve. See? Using a little bit of math, I'm sure you can figure it out. We want to get x alone. So we have x equals 1 minus 2 over 5. x has got to be 3 over 5. Bada bim, bada boom. Here we finished this first part over there. See? Awesome possum. Now, I know that some of you are thinking, oh, but, uh, you know, Kiddos math, if here they tell us that there's six white and here there's that there's four orange, shouldn't I be able to figure it out from there? And I would say, yes, you're absolutely correct. You can figure it out from there. Showing it quickly, um, the probability that the first ball that you pick is white is going to be six over 10. Why is it over 10? It's over 10 because 10 is my total amount of balls. See, so it's gonna be six over six plus four. 6 because white, 4 because orange. My total is white and orange. See, that's why there's a 10 on the bottom. And if you simplify 6 over 10 using fraction stuffs, you're going to end up with 3 over 5. The same 3 over 5 that we got earlier. Now, do as you wish, do as you please, but this trick of it adding up to 1, you're going to use it more than what you think. For example, here on the bottom, what's this probability here? You should be able to get it literally right away. That there has to be 2 over 3. Showing it quickly, it's 1 over 3 plus x equals 1. And because of how fractions work, and if you do the same math that I just did earlier, I mean, same steps, I mean, see? x has to be 2 over 3. But I got that right away because of the secret trick that it adds up to 1. And also, because it's important to understand the probability, it, things always have to add up to 1, or else it's, I don't know what to tell you, it's illegal. So anyways, I think that's the best way to solve it, see? Now, for this last split, we are in a little bit of a pickle because we can't use our mega trick, see? And so now we have to fall back to what I sh showed, I don't know, like 40 seconds ago or something, where it's, you have to do it, do it old school. So you have to find out yourself the probability. And so since we have the knowledge that there's six white and four orange, see? That should be enough to figure out both of these probabilities here, I'm gonna show you how, see? So, when we are in this world over here that I'm gonna highlight in black, see? We need to understand that this world has been affected by something. It's been affected by this path here. And what happens in this path here? In this path here, you're getting rid of one white ball. So now, instead of having six white balls, see? We now have four, sorry, let me try that again. Instead of having six white balls, we now have five white balls. Why? Because through this path, we got rid of at least one, see? What about orange balls? Did this change? No, this did not change. It would have changed if I look at the version on the bottom. Just to show you, the version on the bottom is that the six white stay as six white, and the four orange goes to three orange. See, those are the two main differences. If you can see this that I just showed now, you're pretty much good to go with tree diagrams, see? So take a minute, back it up, understand it, do what you gotta do. Anyways, 
back to this world over here. So what I hi highlighted in a rectangle, these are equivalents. See? These are in the same world. So what's the probability that they pick a white? Well, it's got to be 5 over something, right? Because there is 5 whites. Now, how much is that something? It's my total, right? We've already seen this a little bit before. The total has to be 5 over 5 plus 4. Why is it 4? Because it's 4 orange. Why is it 5? Because there's 5 whites. And that's going to be 5 over 9. See? So for whites, I have 5 over 9. You can do the same process to get orange, or you can do the magic trick that it adds up to 1. Cierto? This is 4 over 9. Ladies and gentlemen, that is part A. I gave you all the tools you can probably use. Solve it however you wish. But uh, it's relatively easy if you just take your time with it. See? The part that's a little harder is finding the probability that John chooses a white ball, which is part B. See? Let's recall that John, all right, John is the second guy. Got it? So if it's the second guy, we're analyzing these guys over here. See? Now, this part is very visually appealing, okay? So watch what I'm going to do. See? Just watch for now. Finding the probability that John chooses a white ball, um, some of you are probably already thinking, ahead. ah, it's this guy here and this guy here. Cierto? Now, a common mistake. See, don't do this. A common mistake is saying, oh, okay, so my probabilities are 5 or 9 and 2 or 3. See? This is on the right path, but it, you're not quite there yet. See, this is a common mistake. I used to do it all the time. The thing is, um, much how we earlier figured out how we got 5 over 9, cierto? and we had to analyze that it had this 5 over 9 is affected by the fact that you got rid of one white, you need to do that again. Cierto? You do it again slightly differently. The thing is, for you to get that 5 over 9, you had to go through the top, right? So we're going to go ahead and kind of like get rid of this stuff on the bottom for now. Is that it? To get this 5 over 9, you had to first pick a white thing. And what's the probability that you pick a white thing first? The probability that you pick a white thing first is 3 over 5. See? So actually, you need to do 3 over 5 times 5 over 9. This added to same steps, but on the bottom, this 2 over 3, but where it came from, 2 over 5. Ooh la la. And so that is how you find the probability that John chooses a white ball. Now hold on to your horses. I know some of you are like, why the heck is it multiplying? Why the heck is it adding? When do I multiply? When do I add? The hardest part of probability is thinking about the problems. See? How they're built. And it's, it's more about thinking about the problem than actual math. See? That's what I'm talking about. So... Yet another rule of thumbs. Ladies and gentlemen, when you think in AND in the world of probabilities, you will be multiplying. See, that's why I put the X. When you think in terms of OR, you will be adding. So maybe I should actually put the adding sign instead of the word ADD. Same idea though, see? So if we analyze here using the AND and the OR, it would be something like this. If Jack, I mean, sorry. If we're looking for when John chooses a white ball, ¿cierto? which is this guy here, verbally, it's like this. Jack pits, picks a white, and John picks a white. That is one scenario. ¿cierto? Again, Jack picks a white, and John picks a white. Or, Jack picks orange, sorry, I highlighted the wrong thing, but you get the idea. Jack picks an orange, right? And John picks a white. See? That is how you think about it verbally. That's why it's multiplying there. That's why it's adding there. That is an explanation of why. If you understand why, you can do anything in this world. See? So I hope that now you can do this problem at least. And yeah, that's about it. So again, the rules of thumb are the and or or for knowing when to add, when to multiply, understanding that each one of these like splits has to add up to one. That can be very, very useful. And also, 
I didn't mention it earlier, but working with fractions is good here. See? Because you can, I don't know, for example, this line of math here. Once you get familiar with fractions, you can do this really fast. See? If you play around with calculator, you end up with decimals. It works anyways. See? It works anyways, but it just takes a little longer. Got it? And many times you're racing against time. So, good luck with that. I hope this helped. I'll see you around. Peace.